Assume that in a class four subjects are taught mathematics, English, science, and social science. The strength of the class is 30, and we have arranged the roll number of the students in the ascending order, that is starting from roll number one up to roll number 30. This M is for mathematics, E represents English, SS represents social science, and this S represents science. This list tells us that the role number one, the student having role number one likes mathematics more than the other subjects. The student having role number two likes English more than other subjects. The student having role number six likes social science more than other subjects. And the student having role number eight likes science more than other subjects. So this is the list of 30 students and it tells us their liking, which subject they prefer to study. Now, if you look at this data, if you look at this list, then you cannot quickly tell that how many students like mathematics more than English science and social science, how many students like English more than other subjects, so on and so forth. So this is not a well-organized data. To organize it properly, we use frequency distribution table. And in this, we use the concept of tally marks. Now, I assume that you know the tally marks. If you don't know tally marks, then I'll ask you to you know, watch the video tutorial on the tally mark. You can find the video link in the description box below. First watch that, then you'll understand here. Now, I assume that you know. So let's move forward. So starting from rule number one, Let's use a tally mark. So rule number one likes mathematics more. So one tally bar. Rule number two likes English. One tally bar. Rule number three likes mathematics. So another bar here. Rule number four likes mathematics. Another bar here. Let's put a tick otherwise so that we don't get lost here. Now rule number five likes mathematics. So one bar again. Rule number six likes social science. Rule number seven likes social science. Rule number eight likes science. Rule number nine likes mathematics. So one, two, three, four, and the fifth bar will be like this. Okay. Rule number 10 likes English. Rule number 11 likes English. Rule number 12 likes English. And rule number 13 likes mathematics. So one bar again. Rule number 14 likes mathematics. Another bar. Rule number 15 likes mathematics. Another bar. Rule number 16 likes social science. So third bar here. Rule number 17 likes social science. Fourth bar here. Rule number 18 likes English. So one, two, three, four. So fifth bar will be like this. Rule number 19 likes English. One bar again. Rule number 20 likes mathematics. So fourth bar here. Rule number 21 likes social science. So the fifth bar will be like this. 22 likes science, 23 likes English, 24 likes social science, 25 likes mathematics, 26 likes science, 27 likes social science, 28 likes mathematics, 29th likes mathematics and 30th roll number likes mathematics. So this is the tally marks representation for this list here. Now let's count the number of students that like mathematics. 5 plus 5, 10 plus 3, 13. 5 plus 2, 7. Science. Three students like science, and in this case, five plus two, seven. 
seven students like social science more than all the other subjects. Now, this number of students is actually the frequency of this distribution table. That's why we call it frequency distribution table. This is frequency distribution table. This particular row tells that if you look at this column, frequency of students that like mathematics more than the other subjects is 30. Frequency of students that like English more than other subjects is 7. Frequency of students that like science more than other subjects is 3. And the frequency of students that like social science more than the other subjects is 7. This is the frequency distribution table. By quickly looking at this table, we have you can easily tell how many students like mathematics more than other subjects, similarly for English, for science, and for social science. In our next video tutorial, we are going to discuss about grouped frequency distribution. Grouped frequency distribution, and we'll learn how grouped frequency distribution is different from frequency distribution table and what's the importance of, of using grouped frequency distribution. So see you in the next video tutorial.